<laughs> he is an original and uh, discovered by a Philly legend. That's who they were discovered. And his biggest hits, he co-wrote or wrote them. Uh, Michelle, talk to me, doll baby. Who do you think it is? Well, at first I came up with the Ebony's, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> But then after doing some researching and researching and researching, I did come up with Brenda and the Tabulations. Okay. All right. Donna, what do you got, baby doll? Donna? Remember, mute. <laughs> Gotta yeah. give me a second. So okay. when I was doing the research, I came up with a couple of groups as well that I also thought the Ebony's. Okay. Um, Brenda and the Tabulations. Um, I I, I I I still really didn't know because there was a couple that could be. So okay. I, I'm a, I'm gonna join Michelle tonight and say Brendan and Tabulations. Okay. I, I don't All know. Right. I okay. You know. All right, Rita, what you got, babe? Uh, after having about three wrong, I came up with Brendan and Tabulations. You know what? Y'all um, make it sound. Y'all make it sound like um, I'm really a dictator or something in here. You know what I mean? Yeah, you are. Yes, you are. Well, I think yeah. our guess is Maurice. Okay. All right. Uh, Drew, if you can fix your lighting, brother, we can't see you at all. If you can fix your lighting, Drew, if you can fix your lighting, some kind of way. Gotcha. Hazel, what you got, baby doll? After researching, I came up with Brendan and tabulations. Okay, Sharon, what you got, babe? Well, my first two guesses were wrong, <laughs> but I came up with uh, Brenda and the Tabulations, and for the person, I came up with Maurice Coates or Jerry Jones. Okay. All right. Andrew, what you got? Your lighting is much better. Looking good, Andrew. Okay. Yeah, I, I uh, like the professor. I had the same. Uh, I went with, first I went with the oil lines, then I went, I thought of the Ebony's. And then I went to uh, Brendan the Tabs, because um, there are some original members there. And uh, I believe the members are uh, Jerry Jones and uh, Maurice Coates. Okay. And uh, they were the only ones that were discovered by Georgie Woods' wife. So I'm gonna go with Brendan the Tabs. Very good, very good. Mark, would you kindly bring our guests on down, please? Show them down, show them down front, please. Good homework, guys. Good homework. Good um, homework. Oh, there's, homework. There's, uh, Tough okay, homework. there's uh there's Diane. Hey Diane. Diane is in Florida. How you doing, babe? Can you hear me? No, she can't. She's unmuting. Okay. Good catch, Mark. Okay. Hey, Di Hi Diane, how are Hi. you? I finally got in here. I had trouble getting in. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're here now. When, and we were just getting ready to bring in a guest. So tell me who your guest was. I thought um, William Hart from the Delphonics. Is that your answer? Yeah. Oh, okay. <clears throat> okay. No. We, uh, we got it. <laughs> I kept coming back to him. I don't know why. With all, I did a whole lot. I was doing it last night when you were on, and I came back, and it kept coming back to him. Okay. Well, that's okay. no problem. No problem. All right. No problem. All right, Mark, would you bring in our guest, please? We got everybody's uh, input. Okay, he stopped you. He had been in Philly while he stopped in Wawa and got a hoagie. So he got some <laughs> onion hanging out of his tooth. But I'm going to bring the brother in. He, okay, he's wiping his mouth. He's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. That's a real good thing. All right. All right. Would everybody welcome our special guest, Mr. Maurice Coates, from original member of Brenda ah. and the Tabulation. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Hi, welcome. Yes. Maurice, it's, it's great to have you here on behalf of myself and, and, and uh, the Magnificent Seven. It's great to have you here. I'm glad that you're doing well. Tell us what you're doing and, and uh, what your aspirations are, and then I'm going to go around and have the group talk to you. Okay, since I retired in Philadelphia, I moved down here where Obama had to go on. And property was low down here, real cheap to buy a brand new home. I said, hey, good move, you know? So we came down here and, and settled down here. But I miss Philadelphia. Really, I miss y'all guys up there, you know? Okay. But in the meantime, I'm about to start an independent label. And I'm working with three or four different artists now. 
And we're going to stay in to the mainstream. None of that off the wall stuff what they be doing. We're going to try to keep it in the middle, you know, okay. without foul language and everything. And I believe it could be done. Somebody has to turn this stuff around, you know, keep everything clean cut, but hip hop. Okay. You know? So that's the formula I'm working on now. You know. Okay. Great. Without the foul language. Okay. I'm I'm so glad, me personally, and I'm looking at the rest of the uh, the team, the Magnificent Seven, and they're bobbing their heads in the same direction. We did not come up with that foul language like that. You know what I mean? The mess, the, the songs that you guys sung, were in the tabulations, the Delphonics, the Stylistics, the Temptations, they didn't have that type of language in it. So I would think, and now I'm going to speak for myself. When I started hearing it, it was it was very very rough on my ears. You know what I mean? And then to try to um, extract a meaning, a loveful meaning out of it was even more difficult. You going back to what it was, if you will, but adding a new flavor to it is very, yes, very, sir. very refreshing. So I applaud you for that. I do applaud you. And it's gotta be tough for you to be someone in this business stepping outside of the mold to create something new. Yes, sir. That's what I'm working on. All right, all right, all right. We're gonna go around the horn here. Uh, Rita, you have a, a question or a comment for uh, Maurice, please. Yes, I have a question. It's nice to meet you, Maurice. And thank you for being on the show. Thank you very much. Um, did you co-write or help produce any of the songs like Dry Your Eyes or um, The Touch of You? Yes. Uh, we, um, I met Brenda at the playground, second in Lehigh. We was counselors and they was trying to integrate the neighborhood back then. So we have all different types of um, ethnic groups in the playground. So at the end of the summer camp, it was Brenda, Eddie, the guitar player, and the drummer, Sylvester, the first one, and myself as counselors. So the supervisor asked us, can you put a show on for the kids real quick? You know, to close out the summer. I said, yeah, okay. I'm the guy to always say, yeah, okay, we can do it, you know? <laughs> so Brendan turned around and said, what are you talking about? I said, I'll tell you what, come to the house tonight. We're going to rehearsal and we're going to put this show on. It took us two days to get our act together. Remember, this is the first time we ever got together. Okay. So we was um, doing a live performance. Georgia Wood's wife was riding past at her convertible with her hair black. Back, got out the car, spoke to us, say, listen, uh, you sound pretty good. You know, can I meet y'all and, and see if we can get a, a labor deal real quick? You know, so I say, yeah. And then she turned around and said, you have any original tunes? I said, yeah, I have about two or three. And when she left, Brenda tapped me on the side, said, Maurice, we don't have no original tunes. I say, in 24 hours, we're going to have original tunes. <laughs> so that's Saturday, we should have tried that quick, that quick. So she came past and we played Dry Yards uh, just once in a lifetime. She said, okay, I'm going to call my husband up, Georgie Woods, and we're going to get you in the studio. But you need to sign some contracts. Everything was moving so fast. And, and I turned around and said, okay. And uh, Brenda turned around and said, I hope you know what you're doing. I said, it should work, you know, because you got to keep up with them now. They're the yeah. one that's moving fast on us. So we got to be up and play our game right. In one week after the record was recorded, Georgia Woods played it on, on the radio WDS. And I said to myself, I'll be darned. There it is. So in three weeks, we had a hit record going on. Mm -hmm. And our first hit record, Dry Eyes. So after Clear Blue Scott, you know, you can come up with good thoughts at the last minute. At the last minute, you can come up with good thoughts and put your best into it. So that was a proven fact that put in your mind, say you're going to do it, and it shall be done, you know. All right. All right. All right. Good question, Thank Rita. You. Good question, Rita. Uh, Michelle. Um, it is, to me, also a pleasure to meet you, too, Mr. Maurice. And I, I have a question. And my question is, I read a lot about um, performances back in the 60s and yeah, well, I'll say the 60s when when they were singing and there was always some kind of problem 
uh, when it comes to getting paid during your performance. <laughs> and I just want to know that um, how after your, your, your first hit, how long did it take before you guys start really seeing some real money come in? Was it really weeks and months and all that kind of stuff that y'all had that come across them problems, getting paid and all that? No, we was getting paid. I mean, they had to pull me out of school and put me in a tutor. I uh, had, had a teacher to follow me around, you know. But like I said, we was moving real fast. And at the time, I was mostly like the writer of the group, the leader of the group, and you could say manager because Georgie Woods didn't travel with us. He's supposed to be our manager, but you know, he's on his high temple, you know. So when it comes to getting paid out there, now I'm glad you brought that up. Back then it was kind of rough. The deal is they always send half of your money into the book of nation. And then we're supposed to collect the other half at the end of the show. So everything was going smooth. Never had a problem until one day I was in a club and I was young and a girl was walking her dog, a German shepherd. And I asked, could I walk with you? And we was talking and walking and this was going on for a whole week. You know, at the end of the show, the owner of the club came out and said, I'm not paying you nothing. I said, okay, why? Because you was talking to my girlfriend. I said, listen, man, I'll tell you what, you're going to pay us, <laughs> you know? So I had to get on the phone, call Philadelphia, call the booking agent, and five or 10 minutes, he came out with the money, you know? So <laughs> along your own contract, they're going to pay you, but you're going to have some people that's going to try you. you yeah. Know? So you got to yeah. know what to do real quick because you're in a different territory and you got to be smart. You can't go off with them. So make your calls and make your moves and collect your money and get out of there. Okay. It was kind of rough on us, you know. <clears throat> great example. Great. Good question, uh, uh, Michelle. Great example. Yeah, it though. was. Yeah. Great example. Uh, uh, Hazel? Hi, Mr. Maurice. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you, Hazel. My question is, dry your eyes. Where, what was the inspiration for that song? You know, that's a good question because I, I could never figure that. Um, <laughs> it, it, no, I'm serious. When Brenda was singing, I said to myself, we got 24 hours. I'm going to let it ride past, you know. Um, when I heard on the radio, I said to myself, I'm still trying to figure out what, where she was coming from, you know. Oh. But as the years went by, it was about a relationship where the mother was in, involved. When she said, mother has to go now, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. So it was like, she was talking about this guy where the mother was involved and she fell in love and all that. So it took me years to figure it out, you know? And it was that one punchline that really let me know what that song was all about, you know? Okay. Okay. Thank right. you. Great question, Hazel. Great question. Uh, Maurice, now you said that uh, I'm going to just jump in here for a second and then we'll, we'll pick it back up. You said that you're working with uh, three or four other groups. Now, these are younger, uh, younger groups that are coming about or and you're shaping them and forming them and instructing them on what to do in the business. Is that what it is? Yes. Train them just like I did, bringing the tabulations, doing okay. arrangements, the writing and and really, the young people, they can create their own lyrics. Okay. You know, okay. I'm not good in lyrics. Brenda was okay. doing all the lyrics. I was doing all the music. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I'm doing okay. the same way. Give the young people a chance to really make money. Because really, you're not making money out there unless you're a songwriter. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be an artist, you got to be a songwriter. You know, you got to put the whole package together. You know, so I'm giving them, giving them that fair shot and teaching them about publishing because some people don't want you to know everything about publishing. True. Their rights and everything. So that's what I'm doing down here with them, schooling them, because I'm not going to be around too long. I'm trying to leave my craft to some young people say, okay, it's your world. Take it from here. But okay. here's the deal. you got to know the business, you know. Now, if I knew what I know now about 
yeah. producing the production, publishing everything. I, I say I could be a, a millionaire, you know. Okay. But I didn't know Jack. Right. Well, you 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 weren't the only one, Maurice. And any of us who were involved in myself, Smoke, uh, any of us who were involved in this business at that age, it was all about getting on stage with the Reynolds rap suits, spitting on the girl. That's all it was about, and having the girls holler at us. You know, it wasn't about learning the business. It wasn't that we were ignorant. We just did not know. Nobody yeah. ever told us. You know, they just told us to go out and sing, and that, and that, and that's what we enjoyed doing. When you got off the stage walking around in your hometown and everybody knowing you are, that was the adulation that you were looking for. Now, anything else, cars and all that, because that was all extra. But the real money that you're talking about was always sort of hidden back away from us and what happened. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now, one more question if I could. The groups that you're working with, are you looking for uh, similar to what you had with Brenda in the tabulation? Three guys, one girl, three girls, one, I mean, are you looking for something? specific or are you just taking them as they come? You know, with the type of recording people do today and the new equipment, Pro Tools and all these digital channels and everything, if the artist can carry a note and know anything about harmony, actually, they don't need backgrounds. Mm -hmm. They can do their own backgrounds because this is what mostly the artists are doing now. They put their own backgrounds. So it's, it's hard to find that three girls in the background and one girl in front or one guy and four guys in the back. That's over with, you know. Okay. Unless you run across a tight group. Okay. So you can play the game right, you know. But it's hard to find a good group to sing all together four-part harmonies, you know. It seems like it's not much of that around, you know. Okay. Well, that's what we talked about earlier. Music and times have changed. And with the modern technology and what have you, I, I guess it's sort of weaning away from that era. And I don't know if it ever come back. That's why I applaud you and teaching these youngsters because some of that, what you've learned from the old days is gonna rub off on them and hopefully inspire them and take them further. I hope, that, I hope right. that's the case. Okay, good question, Ali. Oh, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Donna, what you got, baby? Hi. Um, nice to meet you, Mr. Maurice. Thank you. Um, I have, like, I guess a two-part question. Um, what age were you when you first met um, Georgie Woods' wife, and how many years have you been in the business? Okay, I met, well, she met us, I was about 16 going on 17. I was underage, and... Like I say, things was moving fast. They knew what they was doing back then, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. they gave us that success, the opportunity, but they didn't coach us or invest in us to grow. Mm -hmm. They were so busy collecting money, 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 money. They're twenty percent half publishing everything, and 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 that's the way it was. Like if anybody ever saw the Five Heartbeats. Same yes. thing, same yes. background, you know. Yes. You know, you want to have a conversation with them, see me at nine to five, and sometimes you don't see them at all. So it was kind of rough on us, you know. Uh, I started at 16, Brenda was about 17, 18. So we always in our teens there, you know. Cool. That's a very good point that you brought up about uh, the management situation. I don't mean to cut across you, Donna, but that was a very, very good point. And I, uh, I, can, I can say that I know of quite a few groups that that happened to where the manager was all about the financial aspect of it and not teaching you your craft so you could get better at it. Very good question, Donna. Very good question. Go ahead with your second part, Donna. Um, oh, the second one was how many years has he been in the business? Oh, well, I stayed with Brenda for about four years. And the reason why I left, because Brenda was going through some changes. Uh, she sees some things with the manager and the producers, and she got opportunity was given to her, but she made her own moves because she was in the contract, so they blackballed her. Mm -hmm. So that really messed me up. If they're going to do that to her, they're okay. going to do it to all of us, you know? Okay. So 
I stayed for about three or four years. I see it coming. And she was trapped in a contract and it seemed like she was burned out, mm. you know. And God bless her. But like I say, we knew what we know now. We could have helped her on that situation. Okay. You know? Okay. All right. And then and then the health situation set in, you know, for, yeah. uh, as stemming from that. Yeah. We could have yeah. gave her the right advice. I mean, remember, I was like, I only could share with them all what I knew. I didn't know too much. Right. You know? So we all got hit hard at the end, you know? Okay. They exploited us on our talent, made a lot of money, and we made money. I'm going to be honest. We made money, you know? But when them checks start coming in for BMI, that's when we start seeing money coming in. But they started letting other writers come in, take over, other producers. So everything was out of control. Okay. And once they start getting new people come in, they lost the formula and we didn't get any hits. Mm. Okay. Just okay. the only ones that Brenda and Jerry wrote was hit. Okay. So when they start bringing people in, you can make money off the publishing. They don't know what they're doing, everything. And it, 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 it was it was wacky. So I left. Mm -hmm. right. I left. I've seen it happen, you know. Okay. Good question, Donna. Good question. Diane, what do you got for us, babe? Good evening, Mr. Maurice. It's a pleasure to meet you. I just need to say the summer of 67, I saw you at the Uptown. I saw you at the Apollo. And what is it in, in DC? I thought I was on tour with y'all. Howard, <laughs> Howard. <laughs> Howard. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> but my question is, um, how do you feel about these new groups out now? I went and saw a show and they didn't have a live band. A lot of them don't have live bands. They have, they play records and they wow. sing to the records. Really? Yes. I found tracks, yeah. Yeah, they sing oh, oh, from, tracks. The tracks, okay. from the tracks, from the tracks, yeah. And I, okay. I was really disappointed in that. You know, we, um, like I said, we wrote our own music, composed it, play our own instruments too, you know? So we was like four people bringing out everything on stage live. Some groups, you know, all they could do is just sing, stand in front of the microphone and mm -hmm. they have to depend on musicians. And every time they travel, sometimes the musicians get hung up. They don't have the right musicians. And they have to bring anybody in from the union to pick mm -hmm. up the instrument. They don't know what they're doing. And the stage performer is not perfect like it's supposed to be. So it's a bad situation where a group is not really tight, you know, because when they make their appearance and do live shows, it's all wacky. You know, okay, but that question you asked about people singing, you know, they lip singing over their music, you know, that mm -hmm. yeah. so it's, 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 I call it invitation performance, you know. Okay, well, again, if I could just if I could cut right in, Diane, again, that is what we grew up on live music, yeah, you know, with the bands, people singing sweating and spitting and falling on stage and all that kind of stuff. That's what we grew up with. So now I'm assuming, I know me, if I go to see these groups, I know that they, they're older now, so they can't be doing the split and all that kind of stuff. But I want to see some sweat working out somewhere. You know what I'm yeah. I want to see. And if I don't see that, I'm, I'm thoroughly disappointed. Exactly. You know? I'm thoroughly I disappointed. Add, you know, I don't I expect, uh, what'd you say, Smoke? I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I just want to add to that. She has a good point on that. But think about this now. We were singing back in the day, Renate Tabulation, the Ebony's Temptations, all that. Then all of a sudden, here come these DJs. Don't y'all start hating now. Don't start hating the king. But <laughs> here come these DJs. And they was popping everybody's music. And you guys are hitting the clubs and having a great time. Then all of a sudden, we come out of it. So what kind of happened is we lost, now we, we, we're somewhere in between the tracks and the DJs. 
So people don't want to pay what they want to, but they want the same music. They want the same thing, but the, the, yeah. but the promoters don't want to pay. Mm. Trust it, 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 it's not the artists because I'm, I'm pretty sure Maurice will agree with me. I prefer live anytime. Oh yeah, yes. of course. Because of course. because you 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 get intimate with it with, it. but when you have music tracks going now, you know some people have pretty good tracks and stuff, and it's not, but it's nothing like a live band. But but that's why this stuff happened because the, the DJs kind of took over, and the promoters said and the club owners said, well, we don't have to pay that much, and they go still come to the club and dance and stuff. We hear music. Then all of a sudden, let's die down a little. Now we want the live thing again. I sort of think so we're so, I, I, yeah, I sort of think smoke it goes in, in, in cycles, even further back than we yeah. can remember and or see. It was it was all because back in the 20s and 30s it was all live bands. That's all it was. Right, so, right, and, right. And then it's right. you know, I guess it just sort of goes in a cycle. And you're right. We were somewhat, we the DJs were the culprits to a degree, and the promoters and managers looked at that, hey, we got a packed club, we don't need to pay that money. You know what I mean? I, it's That's always right. somebody <laughs> looking to do something. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Maurice, we didn't want to cut you off, but is that an agreement with you, or you got something to say about that, or what? Yeah, well, you know, it's it's true everything what you said, and that's one of the things I admired back in our days. I used to stand on the side of the stage, watch Smokey Robinson, James Brown, Chuck Jackson, and all these people I was around, and actually, when I felt the vibration of the music thumping and like you say, they sweating and falling on their knees. And, <laughs> and, and I'm saying to myself, that is a performance. Mm -hmm. I remember I was a little church poet. And every time I did a show, the people in the neighborhood say, well, who, were, who was you with this time? I say, well, I met some guy called Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder, you know who Stevie Wonder? I say, yeah. <laughs> Who he's with this time? Oh, I met this little kid named Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, yeah. So all these people <laughs> that I ran across, it was like one of them times it would never happen in my life again. Being at the right place, at the right time. I was there when Rhythm and Blue was planted. Okay. And mm -hmm. I seen all this energy and creativity and, and true artists and everything. And like I say, we could have hung in but our team did not invest in us, you know? Okay. And I'm for sure when James Brown rehearsed or Michael Jackson rehearsed or anybody rehearsed, they would have a place to rehearse at. I still had to rehearse at my house. Oh, really? Yeah, you know, they wouldn't invest in a gym for us to rehearse. They wouldn't invest in anything for us, you know? It was all oh, about wow. putting us out there, traveling and, and no growth, no training or nothing. So we survived on all what we knew right? until well, things got chaos and, you know. Wow, that's interesting. I, 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 that I didn't know, Maurice. And I, you know, I consider myself as well as Andrew and the professor and everybody else, we do our research, but that I didn't know. That yeah. I really, really didn't know. Now, did, working with Side by Side with Georgie Woods for years, and this was after the fact, okay, then I realized how... Uh, you know, how tight a pocket he had. And of course, uh, Gilda, uh, being his wife, I sort of realized what was going on in that situation. See, I keep saying this to you guys out there and my audience that are listening. And, and again, it's just me talking, but I think that some of you can agree with me. The, the music is wonderful. You can listen to Dry Your Eyes, Stay Together, Young Lovers, uh, the, the, the Touch of You. You can listen to that stuff over and over and over and over again, and it makes you feel good. But when you hear Maurice Coates of the original group tell you these stories behind it, does that give you a, a bigger appreciation for the music? Does it make it sound better? Does it make it feel better? Well, it does to me. It really, really does to me. And again, Maurice, we're not going off yet. We still got about another half. I want to thank you for taking your time to spend with us and talk because nobody else can actually represent Brendan the Tabulations besides yourself, uh, uh, one, of the, one of the member, if you would. But nobody else can do that. And these are stories and, and, and facts that we all love to hear. We all love to hear. It's almost like, a, I'm not, I was going to say it's like, it's like a, go ahead. I'm sorry. Somebody was saying something. I don't know who it was. 
Towards the big time. Okay, okay. Anyway, these are stories that that to me are like putting the cherry on top of the ice cream. You know what I mean? I got the ice cream with the songs, but now you don't put the cherry on top of it by telling us or sharing with us some of your great memories. Uh, we got two more members left to ask the question, but before we do, can you, since you were such a big favorite here in the Philadelphia tri-state area, okay, since you were such a big favorite, matter of fact, when I play your records now, I say that this Philadelphia royalty, that's what I always call this, Brendan the Tabulations are Philadelphia royalty. Since you were such a big favorite, can you give us one or two or maybe three shows that you did that were your absolute favorite? It can be at the uptown, it can be out of town, it can be anywhere. Can you give us two or three of them? Well, it was always my hometown, the uptown. The uptown was our hometown. We went back and forth many times there. And the second one would be Apollo, of course. Mm -hmm. And the third one, when we travel to England and Germany. We spent okay. a lot of time over England mm. and Germany. And you'd be surprised. They, they got a lot going over there. And yes, they, they love do. our music. Yes, they do. Not just only uh, Bernard the Tabulations. All the people back in that area, they loved us. You yes. Know? And I learned a lot traveling, different cultures and everything. You know, And I just realized... All people is in harmony when they love music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? there you go. So Good it's statement. a beautiful world out there, but <clears throat> we have to separate that nonsense. When they start turning the music around, everything I can't listen to it no more. I right. get in the car and all I hear is MF, FF, MF, <laughs> BBB, and I'd be like, okay, all right. I can't take it. I can't take right. it. Right, you know? right, right. Well, I'm glad you, you you said that. And you've done the same thing that many, many artists that we've had on this Friday Night Show has already confirmed. The overseas audience is thirsty and hungry and appreciative of our stars, if you will. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago, we had on the Three Degrees and they basically live overseas. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They don't do too many stuff. They don't do too much stuff around here, yeah. but they live overseas because they are in demand and they don't have to beg anybody to play. They will call them in a minute and fly them over there and, and have them perform, you know? It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Uh, Drew, what you got for uh, Maurice here? Yes. Uh, first of all, Mr. Maurice, thank you so much for joining us. And you, it's sir. a pleasure meeting you. Thank you so very much for giving us that uh, education on music publishing and songwriting, which is so important. And uh, it's just not dis uh, discussed enough. But um, with the hit songs you had, uh, Dry Your Eyes, The Touch of You, The Tip of My Tongue, and I even like Brenda's version of uh, Don't Make Me Over. I thought that was beautiful as well. Yeah. My question to you is, how do you not get discovered by Gambling Huff? I mean, granted, I know they were starting out at that time too, but it's amazing how, you know, sometimes, you know, as prolific as they was, you know, they missed out on you guys and you guys were obviously a tight band, you know, and what you picked up, you, you hit home runs with them. And so I was kind of curious uh, uh, how they miss out on you. Um, have, do you I, I'm sure you know Gamble and Huff, of course. So how do they miss out on talent like yourself? Well, you know, Gamble was a cool guy. You know, I sat down and drink coffee with him. You know, okay. I sat down and talk with him. I sat down and watch him work in the studio. And even though I was on the other side of the track, what I mean by the other side of the track, you know, how the Delphines was, was with Philly, whatever that label was, mm -hmm. Intruders and... Yeah, you know, Philly we all was on different sides of the track, but we all merged together. We hung together and we learned from each other, you know? And that's a good question. How did we miss Gamble? But we was discovered by Georgie Wood's wife. And it was right. kind of too late for us to go down there to uh, try to um, join that crew. But Gamble did produce a song on Brenda. 
uh, I don't know which one it was because I wasn't in the group then. But uh, he was a cool guy, you know, okay. with other artists and everything. And he was trying to help me. I ran across a young group. It was a good question you uh, came up with. I ran across a young group. They was like the Jackson Five. It was like three girls, two guys. They was a family. And they were so great. And, and um, I took them down to Gamble's studio and Gamble loved them. So he invited us over his house. And we all rehearsed and everything, but it just so happened the family was Jehovah's Witness and they didn't want to get into the contract where Gamble was offering. And I'm saying to myself, I said, well, they have their reasons, you know. Sure. But uh, that's why I say Gamble's a cool guy. He worked with you. If it seems like you got something going, he'll work with you, you know. Okay. But they all have their hands in their pockets too, so you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, there you Absolutely. Go. Good question, you, Drew. Good question, Drew. Good question. Uh, I, if I can piggyback on that, once you sign a contract, if Gilda, who was Georgie Woods's wife, was sharp enough to see them, hear them, and know what they could possibly do, the the possibilities. The idea was to sign them as quickly as you could for as long as you could. That was the idea. So once they were signed to uh, Miss Gilda Woods, that was pretty much the end of him signing with them, signing with somebody else. You know what I'm saying? True. Because a, a, a manager slash promoter, whatever the case is, if they saw talent and they can make money, like Maurice said earlier, it's about the money. If they can make money, they ain't trying to let you go. You can believe that. I don't care what you got to say. You signed a contract, you done sold your shoes, your soul, your children, and future children and everything else until the contract runs out. And I'm you glad know? you asked that question because uh, Brenda was blackballed because she couldn't get out of her contract. She couldn't leave her contract. She had, I'm not going to mention the name if right. somebody was trying to draft her, but they, it was a famous person who was trying to draft her on their label. Mm. And Brenda said, I'm quitting. I want to go with them. I'm leaving the group. And Georgie was turned around, told his wife, I said, you will never hear Brenda again. Oh, wow. He called all the DJs. Back then, they had their little click. What you, yeah, yeah, click. Yeah. And make one call, the music would stop. Right. Oh, wow. So that's oh. how they brought her down when she wanted to go for it. Right. You know, uh, sure. like I say, I miss her. That girl had a voice on her. Yes, she did. And yes, we did. was very gifted to have her as the Tabulations. That's why we named it Brenda and the Tabulations. You know? Cool, cool. Great story, Maurice. Great story. Uh, all of you guys, Magnificent Seven and Smoke, you know about that black ball situation. I'll just mention the name, Barbara Mason. You know about what we're talking about. We don't have to go any further. Same, we don't have to go any, same thing, Maurice. We don't have to go any further. Professor, what do you got for us, babe? Good evening, sir. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to meet you. I was ready. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My professor. One thing I, uh, well, two things. One is, what is your favorite song? You know, I'm going to tell you the truth. You probably say, what's wrong with him? You know. Dry Your Eyes was our biggest hit. That's the one Brenda and I wrote together. Truthfully, I couldn't stand the tune because it was too simple. To me, it was too simple that we got it together. It was a hit. I could okay. never figure that out. So I, it, it was like, I don't know. It, it's like, I wasn't satisfied with it because we did it real quick, but it was a hit. It was okay. our biggest hit from all the songs that we did. But the true song I really love of all of them, it was two to one I love. Okay. Okay. And that's a great song, man. And that's my favorite there. That's you know, a great and, song. And they draft us up in New York. And when we went in the studio, they had about 22 orchestras of violins and uh, harps and all that. I'm saying to myself, okay, this is going to break us. <laughs> 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 it's going to break oh, us. That's okay. where they went big on us, you know? Okay. Okay, the other thing 
was with the resurgence of all of these reunion shows and oldie shows, would you ever consider getting a group back together and touring one of the oldie get together shows and performing as the tabulations? Good question. What I would love to do after I go through a little transaction, I'm going down here with my lawyer. I have the rights on the name of the tabulations. What I really want to do is get three guys and a female to take that name and tradition and give them uh, an arrow. Okay. And reproduce, bring the tunes up to date, you know, everything. Give them a start. You know how it is. When you start a new group off, you got to have some kind of gimmick. So the gimmick sure. is to find a good original tune and come out with a good cover tune. Okay. And <laughs> if I title them the tabulations, whoever the female name is, it would be a click. And it would start drafting people in and say, okay, let me check this out. You know? Right. Uh, so, yes, I would try to um, have a group to reproduce our songs, you know, but it wouldn't be me. I'm a little bit too old now. I, I mean, you know, they would say, get your old head off the stage. You know? <laughs> no. <laughs> Good question. Good question, Sharon. Good question. Uh, Drew, you had a question? Uh. Yeah, I do, uh, I do have another one. Um, you, you said you have the rights to the Brendan the Tabulations uh, title, the name? Yes, I do. Okay. The tabulation, I'm the one that came up with that name and got it certified. Okay. okay. All right. That's somebody, who did that, that's somebody who did their homework in the, way back in the beginning. You know what I mean? You know, now I can't be, know, go ahead. Go ahead, Maurice. When she asked, what's the name of the group? I said, I'll get back with you tomorrow and I'll let you know. So I sat down with the group. I said, listen, guys, think of money. Think of money. Tabulate. Tabulations, you know. They said, okay, we go with that one, you know. So I went on, got it certified, and a couple of days I let her know because I started seeing how fast they was moving on us, you know. Okay. I couldn't control that contract there. It is what it is, you know. And we was trying to play a fair game with them. We say, well, I don't think they're going to dish us like that, you know. But, you know, Tom would tell you. But I kept the name. Okay. Fantastic. I'm glad, I'm glad that you did. Um, it, it, it's, it's, you're right. You, you made a statement earlier that, uh, and I think that all of us will agree, even my listening audience, will agree that Brenda was an amazing talent, an amazing talent. She could, uh, she could really, really sing. I had the opportunity and the pleasure of uh, being with her in her last days, if you will. I even spoke at her, uh, at her funeral. Um, what a tremendous, we spent a day together. Uh, I had her come into WHAT when I was there to give me an interview. And that day we spent together before we got to the interview, she, she invited me to go to lunch with her. And at that time, she had turned into a vegetarian. And uh, she was telling me about, you know, she was going to, uh, she had cancer. And uh, it, it was a very troubling day inside for me, but, you know, in my heart. But she, because she was such a tremendous person and being with her and her just disclosing everything, Ali, I have this and this is going to happen. This is gonna, it was very troubling, very troubling because yeah. of who she was. You know what I mean? Because of who she was. But uh, I, it, it was a great experience and one that I'll never, ever, ever forget. And having her in the studio talking with, was, even, was even bigger. Um, again, Maurice, as, as, as I say to everybody, hey, Smoke, is there something else you want to say to uh, uh, Maurice? And, and sort of as we start to wrap up, we got about maybe 10 minutes left. No, it's a pleasure just being on the show with you, Maurice. And, you know, you were talking about, someone was talking about not getting paid back in the day, yeah. and you still <laughs> you still got some of those guys still hanging around, man. Yeah. They still trying to do the same thing, and you have yeah. to you have to you have to look at your T's and look at your eyes. 
and let them know that when you get there, if if you ain't paying me, you don't have my money for it. I ain't going on the show. Mm -hmm. I'm not going on the stage. Mm -hmm. That's just the way it is now. I, I had to learn it the, the hard way too. But see, we was kind of lucky because our booking agent, he was a tying guy. Working for a Queens booking agent. Mm -hmm. I'm for sure everybody was familiar with that back in the days. And he didn't play around. He said, go back in there and go ahead and collect the money because everything should be okay now. I'm glad you called. But see, back then, it, it, you got to know somebody to keep you out of trouble mm -hmm. or, or, or get involved with trouble, you know? Mm -hmm. Cause that was like a battle there, yeah. bang bang battle. Depends what move I would have made, you know. So it was kind of rough. But, <laughs> but well, you said fun. something. You said something that meant a lot. You, you didn't get upset about it. No, you just said, yeah. Because I I learned that the hard way too. And mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't do you a lot of good to get upset. Uh, you know, the blood pressure go up and all that kind of good stuff. But you still don't get paid. Either you're gonna perform and get paid, or you go, or you're not. So well, you, you made a move. Know, you gotta know the business. Okay, who is in the middle with this money transaction? Okay, it's not between this dude and me because I was walking the dog with his girlfriend. <laughs> right. So let me make a phone call and get this correct. So you yeah. get crazy out there, say, "Oh, you gonna pay me? You gonna do this?" And, you know, it, it right? Go. That doesn't do any good. So, right. But I, I think that, Michelle, I see y'all come to you in just a second. I think from my experience in this business, and even with Smoke's wife being with them sometimes, you know, when these things happen, it, it, it you have to learn how to not get upset and let things be. Because there's been situations where there's been guns drawn out and people beat yeah. up and all of this kind of stuff over something that they were wrong, but they just tried to bogart you. You know what I'm saying? And that's what most of them did. I, I know of a very famous jock who had a show here in Philadelphia, star-studded lineup, and everybody is performing, singing, crowds going crazy. This person, this this person, goes to the box window, gets a suitcase full of money, and leaves. And everybody's stuff is still on the stage performing. Uh. <laughs> I'm not gonna mention names, but all I'm saying is that how, to me, if I put on a show, everybody's on the show deserves to get paid. Yeah, you know what I mean. I, I just, I don't understand, but this is how some of those uh, people got where they are. You know what I mean? It's got where they are. Uh, Michelle, you had a question. I had to keep putting myself on mute because I got a dog over here. I think want to ask some questions. <laughs> <laughs> wow, really? <laughs> okay. He over here barking. But anyway, um, Mr. Maurice, I want to ask you, like back then, it was so many, so many different groups. Did you did y'all always find yourself in competition? Always have to be better than the next, and and battling and trying to be better. All was that like a hard thing? Well, in some groups, I just admit you're not going to be better than them. <laughs> you're not going to be better than them because okay. it's not your time yet. So we didn't have that attitude. We just did our thing, and people accepted us. Awesome. And and no groups like you, you'd be surprised. Uh, uh, you hear rumors where Michael Jackson always kept himself locked up in the room. He don't want to speak to nobody, all that. But when we met Michael and Jermaine, you'd be surprised. You know, the more we act like we didn't know them, the more they communicate with us. And that's any group. And the reason why I didn't know them, because I didn't know them. Remember, right. I was a church boy. I was on the road. I found myself traveling. I don't know nobody. And that's the way I carry myself. But I was welcome in their dressing room, eating with them, traveling with them. Even Gerald May offered me an offer and said, if you leave the group, we'd like for you to play the keyboard. I said, man, I'm not leaving my group for nobody. <laughs> I got you. OK. Yeah. And I stopped and say to myself, I don't know, maybe I should have took that off, but no, no. Okay, you know, in hindsight, but, in hindsight. Know, but that's how it was. It was friendships going on that we met. So hating, no, you can't hate these people. They was talented. How can I right. hate Jackie Wilson? How can I try to outdo Jackie Wilson? No way. You right. better sit there and learn from these guys and watch instead of hate. 
Right. That's how you get the gift passed down to you. Right. Mm -hmm. Observe okay. and learn, you know? Okay. Yes, that's good. Do right. what you do. Good. Good question, Michelle. Good question. Maurice, as we get ready to wrap up, what was one of the groups or who were some of the groups that you guys tried, wanted to emulate and sort of uh, uh, take after, if you will? Guys, guys or group, groups that had your attention whenever they stepped on stage. I'll be honest with you. That's kind of rough for me to answer. You know, it was, whoa. I think I take the fifth on that. That's kind of, that's kind of hard to answer that one, man. You know, I mean, that's, that's a good question, but it's okay. hard for me to answer that. You know. Okay, let me scale it down then. Uh, instead of going worldwide or global, what were some of the groups from Philadelphia that, you sort of tried to emulate or that were out before you that you wanted to actually learn from and you always watch them on stage. Philadelphia groups. Well, I always admired the Delphonics. They had a combination back there where I said to myself, you guys are slick. I didn't want to be like them, but right. I admired them because they were slick on what they was doing, you know? Okay. So I salute to them guys and and them is one of the favorite groups from Philadelphia that I hung with and knew very well. And like I said, I salute to them guys, you know. Okay. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Good question. All right. Appreciate it. Uh, I think Michelle was sort of alluding to uh, the, the territorial uh, combat, if you will, meaning that uh, the stylistics and the dream lovers and those guys like North Philly versus West Philly. But when they gathered at the Apollo, I'm sorry, excuse me, when they gathered at the Uptown, it was a it was a common battle. It wasn't, you know, like somebody really trying to knock somebody off, but they wanted to walk out with bragging rights from the stage. That type of thing is what I'm saying. And the more you did on the stage, the, the more the audience screamed, the more the people passed out and beat on themselves. That made you feel good. And you walked out talking about, we did it tonight. You know what I mean, and at the at the uh, playground centers and 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 all of those kind of things that you guys actually—that's what I think Michelle was alluding to, because those type of things. I mean, listen, I, all of the folks here probably go back to the uptown at some point in time, and we love for you cats, you guys, as well as anybody else, Pooji to hit that high note and make somebody mm -hmm. cry or Brenda to sing Dry Your Eyes and somebody pass somebody a paper towel because we didn't have tissues back in them days. We had paper towels uh, or your sleeves, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, all of those is what is the type of music that I play and that the Magnificent Seven are involved in. That's what we right. remember. That's the type of thing that we would love to see again. And that's what we salute you for attempting to bring that kind of music back to us. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. So with that being said, uh, is there anybody with a closing statement? We got about two minutes. Anybody with closing statements for Maurice? Go ahead, Sharon. If you yeah, do uh, get to put a group together, as far as I am concerned, you don't have to change a thing in none of your songs. Don't <laughs> update it. Let them sing it just like y'all sang it. But it, it was all good and it still is. You know, you're correct on that because, you know, on some people, when they do cover tunes, they, they change the formula. Yeah, you know, yeah. I may, I may, it, 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 it's going to be done the same way Brenner and the Tabulation's done it, but the harmony is going to be more clear because of the technology. <clears throat> right. And back then, it wasn't too much echo Brenner was using. They don't. Brenner was a natural voice, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, right. you right. couldn't hardly hear the foot pedal back in those days. You couldn't hardly hear the bass. So that is what I want to touch up. Because these young people, they're not going to listen to your music unless they hear a good voice and that bottle. So I'm going to take that combination and bring the story back and don't change it, just like you were saying. Don't change it, you know. Cool. You're cool. correct on that, you know. Good, good point, Sharon. Good point. We got about a minute or so. Listen, again, Maurice, on behalf of the Magnificent Seven, we want to thank you for spending the, uh, the time with us on Friday night. We appreciate it. Your, your, your uh, testimonies and words were very, very valuable.
to what we live for. Everybody, would you give Maurice a nice round of applause, please? And I appreciate y'all inviting me in. I really appreciate that. Really, I miss it. Philadelphia, and it's good communicating from my hometown. Uh, I, I was listening to one of your programs, and somebody said he was from Ninth and Diamond, or 10th and Diamond, I don't know who it was, but I'm a couple blocks from you, uh, 1200. Okay. <laughs> you know, North Philly. Mm -hmm. So okay. we kind of close. It's like a family, you know. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, again, we appreciate you, my brother. And please keep me in the loop on anything that you're doing that you want to release or whatever the case is. I will be more than glad to share it with not only the Magnificent Seven, but my listening audience. Everybody there in the listening audience, I hope that you enjoyed Maurice uh, Coates, one of the original members of, of, of uh, Brenda and the Tabulations. Uh, he's doing well. Keep your comments coming in. Uh, let Mark know what it is. We'll be glad to talk about them. Listen, for the month of June, we got some heavy hitters coming in. So I want you to stay tuned. Take care, everybody. God bless you. Happy Memorial Day weekend. Stay safe. I love you all very much. Maurice, I'll talk with you soon, my brother. God bless. Thank you.